Hello again, let's go now to check how to balance redox equation, an important topic for the course. Balance and redox equation can be an easy task that could be done only by spatial. For example, for the following reaction of sodium with water, we only need to write a half in front of the molecule of hydrogen in order to have the same amount of atom in both sides of the equation. However, for more complicated reaction, we should use a method that helps us to accomplish this task. A convenient method involves the employment of oxidation numbers to obtain a properly balanced equation. This method is known as oxidation number method, with this based on a set of rules that we need to apply. For example, let's explore a case such as the reaction usually employed in a laboratory to produce chlorine gas. This is the reaction of potassium permanganate with hydrochloric acid in aqueous acid media. We can show the following preliminary equation for this reaction. Then we show a first equation where only the elements oxidized and redox are balanced. In this case, we simply need to add a half in front of the chlorine in the product sides of the equation. The next step is to assign oxidation number following the rules explained in the previous video, which will allow us to know which substance is oxidized and which one is reduced. In this example, manganese reduced its oxidation number from plus 7 to plus 2. Now we need to determine by what factor has changed the oxidation state of the compound that is being oxidized. And similarly, how has changed for the substance that is being reduced. In our examples, manganese is reduced by a factor of 5 while chlorine is oxidized by a factor of 1. Once we know both changing factor, we need to adjust the ratio of both compounds, the substance that is reduced and the compound that is oxidized in order to fulfill the following rule. In a balanced equation, the total change in oxidation number is zero. According with this requirement, we will need five chlorine ions that will suppose an increase of eight units in the oxidation state. And that will balance the total decrease of eight units in the oxidation state for manganese. Now we shall use water to balance the oxygen atoms. Due to the fact that we have a set of oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation, we need to add four molecules of water to the, to the right hand side. Finally, since the reaction takes place in aqueous acid solution, we now add the appropriate number of H plus ions to complete the balancing. Therefore, eight H plus ions are added to the left hand side of the equation. The reaction can be doubled to show it in a more convenient way to finally obtain our final equation. It's quite convenient to do as our last step, check if the equation is balanced with respect to charge. In our case, we have four positive charge on the left hand side as a result of subtract the 10 negative charge of chlorine ions and the 16 positive charge of protons. This net positive charge of plus 4 on the left side of the equation will exactly balance with the plus 4 charge on the right hand side of the equation, generated by the two man manganese ions with charge plus 2. It's important to know that if re the reaction had happened in a basic solution, we would have assigned hydroxide ions to each side of the equation to balance it out the amount of hydrogen ions. In that case, our equation looks like that, where 16 hydroxyl ions should be added to both sides of the equation. Obviously, you will notice that dihydroxyl ions and hydrogen ions on the left hand side, they are going to combine to form water molecules. And therefore, we will end with water in both sides of the equation. We need to reduce the state of water that in our example is on the right hand side. That finally we conduct to our final equation in a Baxi solution. In the next video, we will explain another method to balance Rader's equation that is known as ion electron method.